part two of our What's It Like to Homestead in New Brunswick series. Today we're going to talk to you guys about the actual farm. Now that's going to include things like your animals that you're getting, your buildings, your garden, your fruit trees, things like that. Things you want to concentrate on your first year starting your homestead. Now one of the first things I want to recommend that everybody does is don't rush out and get an animal right away as soon as you get to your homestead. Trust me, I know when you get there, the first thing you're going to want is go and get all the cute fuzzy baby animals because that's what I wanted to do. You're excited. <laughs> yes, you're of course excited. you are. You're you excited. Know, but in your first year, especially if you're new to the area like us, we came from BC, different climate than New Brunswick, and our first thought was, we want chickens. But we, we slowed down a little bit and we decided, you know what? We're going to wait. We need to wait. Especially for us. We got here. It was fall. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to get a bunch of animals in the fall going into winter. You're not set up. You're not ready. It can be very overwhelming in your first year. Yeah, for sure. And because we've never homesteaded before, we wanted to make sure that we did things right for the animals from the start. So we wanted to make sure that we had all their shelters set. We wanted to make sure that everything was ready for them before we got them. And in order to do that, we had to wait for winter to be over. Well, you want to make sure that where you build your chicken coop or your goat barn is not going to have a big massive runoff of snow and flood the barn. Yeah, so you exactly. want to watch your seasons to see where a good place is to put all your outbuildings. Yeah, because if we had a built, say, our goat run or our chicken shelter at the bottom of our hill, like our fields, it dips down. Our house is built up and the fields are lower then as soon as the snow started to melt, there would have been two or three feet of water in our goat shelter, and that wouldn't have been good. So I'm glad we waited so that we could see, you know, the landscape and how things melted and where the runoff went. Unfortunately, that cost us most of our garlic this year because we did rush and plant that because it had to be in in the fall, and we picked a bad location. We thought it was far enough away from everything. Unfortunately, it wasn't. The water ran directly into the garlic bed. And as you've seen or haven't seen in our previous video of our garlic harvest, there was probably a good six inches of water on the garlic. Yeah. And that caused us to have a less than stellar crop this year, for sure. And we will be making a change on where we're gonna be planting next month our garlic, mm -hmm. which we're gonna be putting it in our raised bed closer to the house, away from a flood prone area. Yeah, we wanna give it the best chance of getting a good harvest next year. We didn't do bad this year. We still probably doubled what we planted, yeah. but it's not as good as we had hoped for, for sure. So changes for next year will make it better. Something else we took the winter to do is we sat down and we planned where we wanted our outbuildings. Now, if you're in a climate like us, northern New Brunswick, it's minus 30 at nighttime, and you don't want your outbuilding so far away that you gotta go through three feet of snow in a blizzard in the dark just to lock up your chickens and your goats every night. Yeah. So you want your buildings, your outbuildings, you want them as close to the house as possible, but not that it's against your house. Yeah, you definitely don't want them against the house or, you know, right in your backyard. Of course, your chickens, because your chickens stink. They do smell. They I mean, smell. chickens themselves, they don't no, smell. Their but poop does. Their sure. poop does. So, but you want it close enough. Like for us, if you guys notice in our video, we can go out the back door. It's 20 feet to the chicken coop. And then it's another 30 feet from the chicken coop back to where the goats are. So it's all pretty close for this winter when we need to feed and put the animals to bed. It's not a long hike in the snow just to lock up the barns at nighttime. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to have to hike through the back field to lock up the goats at night because oh, no. the snow gets really deep. Like, I understood before we moved here that it snowed and there was snow, but you don't get it until you're here and you try and hike through the snow and it's up to your waist or you fall through where there's a tree <laughs> and you get sucked into a hole that's four feet deep like it's it's crazy so you want to give yourself that time to make sure that you're building things within a reasonable distance so you're not having to hike Placement on your outbuildings is, is everything crucial. is very oh, crucial, sure. especially if you have your outbuildings, say, close to where your gardens are. Mm -hmm. When you harvest your gardens, the stuff that, you know, isn't stuff you want to keep for your own eating, you can throw to your chickens. You don't have to use a wheelbarrow and wheel it, you know, six acres across to feed your chickens. Yeah, I love that our chicken run is just on the other side of the orchard. So it's literally right there. We can take all the scraps from the garden, the carrot tops, things like that that we don't use, 
and we can give them to the chickens and they're right there and they love it. Plus they get to watch us while we're out in the yard too and the kids get to watch the chickens run around, which is great. Plus our chickens being as close as they are, there is some safety there because if there was a, an incident with a hawk or something, mm -hmm. we're close to get in there and intervene and possibly save the chicken. And I think that was a problem this year is we had an incident with a hawk. If you guys haven't seen the video, check it out. But one of the hawks in the area decided to get into our coop and kill one of our chickens. Yeah, our chickens have an enclosed coop, but they have an open run. So our chickens have their own field to free range in. It's about 80 feet by 40 feet and it's attached to their coop. So they're open, there's no roof on it. And we'd had no issues for probably, two months. I think they were outside for two months at that yeah. point with no problems. We'd never even seen a hawk in the sky. And then all of a sudden, the kids were like, hey, there's a chicken in the front yard. And we were like, what do you mean there's a chicken in the front yard? So everybody got up to look. Sure enough, there's a chicken walking around the garden. So we just thought, you know, she got curious and wanted to have a snack out of the garden or whatever. So I picked her up and went to put her back over. And there was a hawk in the run pinning down one of our other hens. Yeah, and we thought our roosters, I mean, at that time, we had four roosters. We did. We thought we had enough roosters to sure. protect our whole flock, and the roosters had ushered the other chickens inside when this hawk attacked, mm -hmm. but the roosters at that time hadn't attacked the hawk until we came up, and then the roosters saw that we were there. They came out, then they saw the hawk. Two of the roosters jumped on the hawk. They killed the hawk right there on the spot. They so they eventually they... did their job, yeah. but we lost a hen in the process. We did, and one of our roosters was injured really badly. Yeah. Um, he had a bunch of his feathers ripped off and he had a huge gash in his back from the hawk fighting. But those roosters actually took down a hawk, which to me is amazing. <laughs> It is, because. but on the other hand, we've also had some problems with having more than one rooster. We did, yeah. After the hawk incident, um, our roosters, I think they were a little more on edge and they were a little more aggressive they were, after yes, that. I absolutely agree. They um, were very aggressive. And one night they went after one of the hens for whatever reason, either somebody had gotten a little rough while they were mating or something like that and they all decided to gang up on her and they basically stripped all of the feathers off of her back they cut her open really bad she had all the feathers off the back of her head were gone and they just left her out in the run basically to die it got dark and all the other chickens went inside and she was just out in the rain by herself that's what we decided at that point we had decided that having more than one rooster just wasn't going to work for our flock. We had had some comments on our other YouTube videos, people saying, you know, you should have more than one rooster as a backup in case you lose one. And in the barred rock category, having more than one rooster, it just is too much competition. There was. It definitely caused a lot of turmoil within the flock itself. The hens were always on edge. Everybody was always like nervous and running around and just wasn't settled. There was like too even much... in the coop, nobody, not all of them slept on the roosting bars. Some of them would yeah. sleep in the nesting boxes just to be away from the other roosters. Whereas now that we're only down to one rooster, everybody sleeps on the roosting bars. They have their hierarchy. They know what chickens sleep on what level. And the coop is a lot calmer these days, for sure. Yeah, so if you're thinking about homesteading and you're thinking about how many roosters do I need, how many chickens should I have, I would say if you're gonna start out, you start out with maybe six hens and one rooster. Yeah. And you always wanna have a rooster because the rooster is gonna protect your hens, especially if you're in a real remote area. Mm -hmm. So, and in the future, if you plan on actually hatching your own eggs, well, of course you need to have a rooster. And that's why we have a rooster is next spring, we will be hatching our own baby chicks here mm -hmm. on the homestead. Yeah, definitely. Now, if you're planning on keeping your chickens in an enclosed coop and run, then you don't have a need for a rooster. No, and if, that's yeah, fine. If you're not if that's hatching your you own eggs, keep them, you're not hatching eggs. You have them in an enclosed run. You definitely don't need it. But for our girls, we want to let them free range as much as possible. They eat bugs. They eat grass and dirt. They like to dust bath out in the yard and roll around and stuff like that. And I think they're just a lot happier with having that freedom. So with just the one rooster to protect them, they're definitely doing really good out there.
Exactly. And when you're thinking about homesteading for the first time, and you're thinking of all these costs, like you're hearing us talk about, you know, chicken barn and chicken run and goat barn and goat run. You're thinking, well, I'm looking at a piece of property that doesn't have all that. Well, what you got to do is you got to sit back and evaluate what you have. Mm -hmm. Use what you've got. And that's what we did this year. We, when we purchased this house, it had the little garden shed, which we turned into a chicken coop. And it had a two car detached garage. It did not have a barn on the property. No, and no we barn. sat back and we went, well, the cost of a barn is like $20,000 here. I mean, we would love to have a barn more than anything. And oh, one day we will have a barn built on the property, but the finances for us just isn't there right now to mm -hmm. have a barn. So what we did is we split our two car garage in half and we built a two 10 by 10 stalls for our goats. Yeah, which you guys can see in our building our goat barn video. You can see how we used pallets and wood and things like that to build it. And for us, that was the best solution. It was the cheapest way for us to be able to build a good shelter for our goats that was close to the house yes. and would also keep them warm and dry over the winter. And ultimately that was our goal. Would we love to have a nice fancy barn out there? Of course. of course. But at the end of the day, all that matters is that the goats have a safe, warm place to stay and yep. it's easy for us to access and feed them and take care of them. And with using the pallets, I think our cost was about $200 building those two 10 by 10 mm -hmm. stalls, which yeah. is really cheap when you think about it, with the cost of wood nowadays being as expensive as it is. Mm -hmm. And again, we would love to have a milling machine so that I could go cut some trees out back down and be able to mill my own wood, but a, a milling machine is gonna cost you about $4,000. Yeah. I know there's cheaper setups where you can get the chainsaw guided ones for a couple hundred bucks, but I mean, I'm not experienced with those as much and having a nice big milling machine that you can make your two by fours and mm -hmm. your two by sixes with would, would be really, really nice. But for now, we just work with what we got and using the two car garage and part of it as a barn has worked for us really good. Yeah, it's been great because we, re we only have one vehicle. We only need room to park just the truck in there. And so the other half was completely just wasted space basically. Yeah. So we built the two good stalls. We have enough storage for all of our straw and for our hay to feed them and then with the chicken coop it was what they call here is a, a mini barn or yes. a baby barn a is baby what barn. they call them yeah. and we just split it in half built the wall down the center and half of it storage for our brooder box which is where we're going to raise our baby chicks next year yeah and then the other half is all for the chickens and if we had to build those two buildings separately i think it would have easily cost us four times what we paid Probably about to, five grand to build yeah. a little mini barn for the goats and another little barn for the, for chickens. the chickens it could run you as much as you know five grand now i mean there's a lot of people out there who'll say well i did it for a lot cheaper and i did it this way mm -hmm. there's also there's lots of different variables on you know how much it's going to actually cost you it just depends on the type of supplies and how you build it if you mill your own wood you're going to save a lot of money if you're going to home depot and you're buying all the wood to build it's going to cost That's you lots cost you, you could also buy a kit online where you just have to put it together. There's yeah, lots, of sure. different, there is lots of different, different ways and stuff yes. that you can buy and ways to go about it. But for us, the easiest was to just use what we use already what we have. have. It saved us so much money. Yeah. For under a thousand dollars, we built both of those areas exactly. for the goats and the chickens for under a thousand dollars. And now we're up and going. I mean, this year we actually originally back in the spring, we didn't plan to have goats. Yeah. That wasn't in the plan until no. next year. Um, but we just, we started building one day. We, we were like, Hey, you know, we got all these pallets and we got some free time right now. Let's just start and see where we get to. And really, and I think it took us three days, maybe we four days finished, we finished it in stalls. four days. Like, and then we stood there and we went, well, well, it's built now. <laughs> we might as well start looking at getting some goats. Yeah. So, because it is going to take us two years to get to that milk production. And that, that was our main reason for getting goats is mm -hmm. we are going to be milking it yeah. so that we can have milk. Fresh milk on the farm. We can make goat we can make cheese. Goat milk soap and things like that. Ultimately, the whole reason for the goats is to be able to benefit from them. And if we can do that while saving money by not having to build a separate barn, then that's the best way to go. Exactly. And a lot of people look at goats and they go, well, I'm going to get goats and I could sell a bunch of goats and make a bunch of money and be profitable on my homestead. And we started breaking down the cost and what it costs to feed the goats and even, you know, the building to house them in and everything. 
there's not a lot of profit in goats. If you guys are thinking about goats as a profitable business, yeah, you might make some money if you are breeding, you know, 20 or 30 goats. Yeah. But on a three to four goat scale... You're going to cover your feed costs and that's, that's about, about it. it. If yeah. that. I mean, you're, you are going to get the milk for them. You can make cheese. You know, you can sell the babies for 75 to $300 yeah, depending, depending on your breed, your size and everything. Yeah, at the end of the day, you might make yourself $1,000 selling baby goats every year but i mean your hay cost is going to be a couple hundred bucks yep. your grain cost probably a couple probably hundred a couple bucks, hundred bucks yeah. you know and all the other supplements that you need mm -hmm. it's going to add up pretty close to the thousand dollars that, that you, you get made. For the babies, but for on sure. the other side if you can cover that cost of feed and your, you still get the milk, the milk from it and you cheese. can make yogurts and other things like that. That's right. That's where your profit comes back to you. Back because to then you. you're saving that money by not having to buy those things. But is it are goats a business? Some people would say yes. Some people say yes. We I say on a small on scale. On a small scale, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. Basically, the goats have babies to pay for their own food is what it Basically. is. Basically. So you want to get them to the point where they're almost self-sustaining themselves by having babies. But again, that's a two-year yeah. plan. It's, it's not, not an overnight thing. It definitely has its process for sure. And just because you breed them doesn't mean you're guaranteed to, one, get pregnant, or two, even keep the babies. So... What it's happens? A, a gamble, right? What happens if there's a birthing problem mm -hmm. and you need to call in a vet? Exactly. There now, could be a large bill be a behind large that. Bill, or you could even possibly it's happened where you lose your mom, goat, and the baby. Yeah. And it, unfortunately, with animals, that's a risk you take when you take them on and you breed them. Exactly. Breeding goats, breeding any kind of farm animal mm -hmm. can be very scary sometimes, that's especially true. if you don't know what you're doing. For sure. But we do plan on doing that next spring here on the homestead. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that because there's going to be some breeding and some baby goats here. Hopefully some baby goats some baby running goats. around the farm I mean, next year. Our plan here on the homestead next year is expanding. Mm -hmm. And we're going to expand quite a bit actually. Yes. What are some of the things that we plan on getting? Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to get some pigs next year. And now the pigs aren't going to be a year-round thing for us. No. We're going to get baby pigs in the fall and we're, or sorry, the spring. <laughs> the spring. The we're gonna, spring. We're planning on two baby pigs mm -hmm. in the spring. In the spring. Which you guys will see over the next month or two. We need to clear a part of our homestead and fence it for the baby pigs. And again, here's another way that we're going to save some money. We thought about building an outbuilding for the pigs but again it can be expensive mm -hmm. so we're planning on getting like a thousand liter water tote yeah. cutting a hole in it putting some straw hay in there mm -hmm. and making that and you can get one of those thousand liter totes for a hundred bucks yes absolutely. and now you've got an instant barn for your pigs exactly and what we're going to do is we're just going to raise them until the fall until they're big enough and then we're going to have them butchered that's so right. that we can put the meat in our freezer and we don't really want pigs year round. Here in the winter time, having pigs outside. It would be outside, really difficult, I think, to have breeding too cold, pigs here It'd be way too cold, too much snow. Yeah. It's just much easier, I think, and more cost effective for us in the long run if we were to just buy a couple of baby pigs every spring and just raise them up for butchering. Because what we could do is we could take one pig mm -hmm. and send it in for butchering. And at the end of the day, you're looking at probably about 400 bucks. Yeah. To put all the meat in your freezer from the time you start processing to the time that yes. it's done. Yeah. We're not going to be doing that ourselves. We know no, nothing about butchering no. We're pigs. We're going to send it to We're a gonna butcher send to have it done. Exactly. But the second pig we can sell for about three or four hundred bucks mm -hmm. once we've raised it. And we're hoping that pig will offset the cost, the cost of us butchering so that at the end of the day, the pigs are only going to cost us the feed. Mm -hmm. and the uh, building and the fencing exactly. that we have to put out next year. Yeah. So that's definitely the first thing that we're, I think we're going to start with in the next little bit is getting that. And getting then, that ready because we want that run to be ready for next March, April when the snow's gone and the ground's thawed. Yeah. We can get a couple baby pigs. A couple pigs in there. What else are we looking at? Uh, I want to get some ducks. Yes, I've duck eggs. I've always wanted ducks. I love duck eggs. They're amazing to bake with and I just like ducks. 
they're cute and they like she to wants to ducks swim. probably not my <laughs> first choice to go with but ducks is something yeah. that she's always wanted exactly. we are thinking about a goose and the main reason for the goose is for mm. our chickens yeah um when we had our hawk attack we did have some of our viewers suggest that we get a guard goose for our chickens and it just helps supplement the rooster watching the chickens right so that's something else that we're going to probably look into is getting a goose or two probably a pair a pair of females just to you know have something else out there with eyes on the sky what we did do aggressive. this year to protect our hens a little bit more which has worked it's been two months now we've had no problems with predators is we got an owl decoy and i got up on the roof of the uh, chicken coop and I mounted it up there so it's up nice and high so any hawks that are flying by can see it mm -hmm. and for two months now we haven't had one predator get in there and kill any of our hens so I don't know if it's a coincidence or if it's actually working but for us we'll take I it. mean a $15 <laughs> plastic decoy is yeah. working for us right now to keep our hens safe exactly so if you are looking to homestead one of the first things you should look at animal wise is starting with something small unless you're an experienced you know animal caretaker or you've grown up on a farm start with something small like chickens i don't even think i would start with goats maybe first i definitely think the chickens are a lot easier and you know a family of you know four or five six hens is enough you know, yeah. you're gonna, you're, we're producing right now between eight to 10 eggs a day. Yeah. Have you guys seen in our other videos? <laughs> we're, we're, we've got like 70 eggs in the fridge. Yeah. We need to start selling them. What, what our plans are is we can feed them back to the chickens mm -hmm. for, you know, all the, you know. The protein and stuff is good to go back to the chickens. They get the calcium out of them and it's free food, basically. Your chickens are laying their own food. So yeah. it definitely also helps cut down on costs if you can supplement them as well. We can, you know, scramble up the eggs. We can feed them to the dogs. That will cut down on the dog food too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things that we can use the eggs for, but we do need to start selling the eggs to try and help recoup some of the costs mm -hmm. of the grain and everything for the chickens. Yeah. What else are we looking at for next year here on the homestead? Outside of pigs, ducks, I mean, are we looking at flamingos, ostriches, <laughs> elephants? Okay. I mean, definitely none of that. None of there those are sets. some animals that we have decided that are a no go for us. We're just not looking to expand into anything like cows. They eat a lot of hay, they need a lot of land. Basically, they say you should have one acre of grazing pasture per cow. Well, I don't really feel like having five cows on our property. No. <laughs> so that's a no-go for us. And with horses. the goats, we'll have the milk there. Yeah. And horses, just a no-go for us. Yeah. I mean, I know our daughter wants a, a little pony. miniature pony, which pony so one bad. day when we have a barn, she might get a little miniature pony or something. Yeah. But for now, cows and horses, they're just, they're a cost. Yeah. And, and for the money that you're going to, you know, save on the milk when you're producing your own milk, it's going to be three or four times that in feed for the cow, especially in the winter time. Well, for here too, because our winters are so long and so cold yeah. that you would be supplementing them with hay and feed for six, seven months of the year. And that's why and people that's go with goats. It. Yeah. Because goats are a smaller milk source mm -hmm. than a cow. Mm -hmm. So you go with a goat, it takes less hay yeah. to be self-sustaining than a than a than a cow. Mm -hmm. I mean I know a cow is going to produce a lot more milk than a goat, mm -hmm. but for us, for a family of five, With I think three, three goats, goats would that be will more than enough be more us. than enough for us. Yeah. Of course, some people don't like the taste of goat's milk. Some people have tried it and they go, oh, goat's milk, I'll never drink that, eh, right? Mm -hmm. But for us, we've tried goat's milk, we don't mind it, so it will be a good change for us. And it'll, and milk nowadays is really expensive. Oh, yeah. I mean, Especially for, here, like a huge, I think that was one of the biggest changes when we moved from BC is the cost of milk. Like, like back home, we would pay maybe $3 for a four liter jug. And here that's $8 yeah. for the same size. Like well, there's a lot crazy. more dairy farms in BC mm -hmm. than there is here in New Brunswick. So the shipping yeah. costs, a lot of the milk here is probably coming from like either Nova Scotia or even Quebec. Yeah. So it's, you know, I know there are dairy farmers here in New Brunswick that mm -hmm. do supply the area, but I don't think it, it is 100%. I, I can't they meet the demand because the milk yeah. costs here are just astronomical. It's Unless crazy. it's just 
that just hire here yeah, for some for reason. For whatever reason. You know, again, like, you know, they have to feed those cows in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. So their cost is up. So they're passing that cost passing on to the stores. But for us, that's, you know, why we're going with the goat milk mm -hmm. is the cost of the milk. Exactly. And, of course, we want to be more you know self-sufficient here on the homestead you yeah, know this we don't year have to rely on the grocery store so much we don't we don't and that was the other reason why this year we why we planted so many fruit trees yes is we know that those fruit trees are another three years away from you know giving us giving us enough fruit so we amount. can be self-sustainable yeah but, but that was part of our long-term plan is to grow for the future is basically yeah. what we were doing so that we could sustain ourselves come you know, three, five years down the road with our gardens and our gardens are going to be expanding next year for sure. Double. We're going to double, if not triple our gardens next year. We did have a lot of time to build a lot of garden space this year because we had so many projects, but next year we could concentrate more on building the gardens, more composting and stuff along that line. Mm -hmm. I mean, this year we are collecting the seeds. We've turned part of our garden, um, you know, broccolis and, mm -hmm. and cucumbers and, peas and, and peas lettuce and stuff into stuff. seeds so that yes. we have seed for next year because again, seeds can be expensive. They can be, especially if you're planting big gardens. Um, best thing to do is just save your seeds from this year if you can. But when you're starting out homesteading, those are some of the things you want to think about is getting your fruit trees in in the first year because they do take three to five years to produce. And there's a lot of homesteaders out there that have been on their land for three to five years and they're just planting their fruit trees now. And we hear them say it all the time. I wish I, I, wish I would have done this right from the beginning. And that's why we did that this year. We did. Yeah. We got that in the ground. And the best time to actually buy fruit trees, if you guys are going, well, Fruit trees are expensive, you know, they're like $50 a plant. Best time is, is to go to a, a garden store in the fall when the leaves are changing, mm -hmm. the fruit trees are less appealing to the public, they put them on sale they in the do. fall. They clear them out in the fall big time and that's the perfect time to get any plants that you want to put in your garden for the future is definitely check out your garden centers. Even Home Depot, they clear out their plant section because exactly. it closes for the year. So they just want to move the product and yeah. not have to warehouse it the next year. Exactly. So you can get a $50 cherry tree for as little as, you know, $15 maybe at exactly. your local so store. It can be a good savings for It can sure. be, exactly. So hopefully that gave you guys a little bit of an insight on what it was like for us starting our farm with our animals and our outbuildings and our gardens. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next part in this series where we tell you more information about what it's like to homestead in New Brunswick, Canada. If you like today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that you get notified every time we post a new video. We'll see you guys in the next video. As, As always, always, thanks, thanks for watching. watching.